Hey, what's up everyone? White Cross here, and today we're going to be going over what happened to Shakari Richardson from the Olympic trials to the Prefontaine Classic, and we're going to start the video right now. All right, and before I get too much into this, I do want to start off by saying and, and really giving a big congratulations to Elaine Thompson Hurrah. I think that her, you know, been running the second fastest time ever as a woman, and, and even some saying that this is, you know, officially the fastest time just because of the, you know, scrutiny that Flojo and her 1049 performance and whether or not she was using performance enhancing drugs in order to make it so she got that. So by Elaine Thomas Hurrah running that time 51 today, it really solidifies her as, you know, if not the best sprinter, you know, definitely top two best sprinters of all time and, and perhaps maybe having the best official sprinting time ever. So huge congratulations to her. I do want to go, we're going to look, take a look here at Shakari Richardson. We have her, she's in lane five and really both of these here. Uh, and, and let's go ahead and, and get into the start. So, you know, she's really typically not a great starter overall, right? She has, she's never really been known to have a tremendous start here. And just like normal, she, she did kind of start off with, you know, not getting into a, a great starting position. I don't know over the last few weeks if she's really been concentrating a lot on trying to improve her start. I will say, you know, typically she seems to have a little bit more uh, lateral movement at the beginning. You know, typically when we, when we watch her go, if we look at that second step, before she was going a little bit more out to the side and, and just was a little bit more lateral overall um, in how she was getting started there, um, where now it looked like she was just a little bit more kind of straightforward, you know, really tried to maybe correct some of that. Uh, but the bigger thing is gonna be, you know, her transition to top speed and it just looks like she got you know, really into her top speed a lot earlier into the race where here you can see she stays in her drive phase for a good amount of time. And then once she gets into her top end speed, and that's what, what is so surprising here is, you know, she just really was able to separate before when it comes to your, her ability to get to her top end speed, you know, was really able to run away from everybody, you know, like nobody was even close. So it's, when, when we look at this number here and really break it down, we'll see her foot's hitting the ground at about 364 on the right side. That uh, might be even early. And then she's off, yeah, I mean, she's off a little bit after 0 0.08, so we'll, we'll save 7.2, right? So she was at like that 0 0.08 contact time, which we've been talking about before, in comparison to, you know, let's see where she's at here. And, and that's what's so different is she just totally got left behind. So it's like, what ended up happening that really created this difference? 0.78 and yeah I mean she was off by like 0.87 right so she's probably at about a 0.09 could even be less though could even be 0.08 you know it's still about the same at least on the right side let's take a look at the left see if there's any big differences there 8.4 here it looks like on the on the um or with the left side and in a similar spot so she's off at, at probably about 9.2 you know she's still here it's 9.1 at the bottom she does look like she's landing a little bit more on the outside part of her foot here Say 9.6. Yeah, and I mean, she looks like she's back off at about 0.04. So, you know, it doesn't look like there's a huge difference between her foot contact time. So that doesn't end up being the big thing here. We'll look to see time spin off the ground. So we said 92 here and back underneath at about 2.4 in comparison to about 06 here and touching back down about 3.8, let's say. So that's a 0.32. It does look like she's kind of coming up a little bit different in her, yeah, 0.32 from before as well. It does look like as she's she's transitioning up, she is, she might change up her mechanics a little bit in that her leg drives a little bit different here. Before she was able to, to bring her, her leg all the way up and then drive the knee through, it looked like, right? You can see how as she's pushing off, she's really bringing that heel right up to her butt and then coming right through the, the run where it looks like now she's going and really just not getting that same range and extension, right? So as she's pulling back here, look how when she pushes or pulls back, she's a little bit tighter in that hamstring, right? So you can see how early she starts that pullback on that right side, right? Where here, she's able to get that heel a little bit closer to her butt, right? She has a little bit better range of motion through the quad, it looks like, where here, that foot looks to be a little bit lower. And then when she lands on the right side, yeah, she still seems like she's pretty straight. There might be a little bit of a difference between her overall ankle stability 
you know, it's hard to tell for sure, but it looks like the ankle stability is a little bit off here on the right. She doesn't land as good when she's hitting the ground. She's going a little bit more into like knee bending and, and losing some of the control of her ankle, it looks like, right? Because she's collapsing in a little bit more and allowing that knee to bend where before she was able to stay a lot more upright as she's hitting the ground. See how, how her leg, when she's hitting, just seems more upright here or more straight here in comparison to here where there's a little bit more of a bend that's going on. So, you know, a couple of things that kind of stood out in terms of, you know, that it looks like from a, a number perspective though, in terms of contact time uh, and, and transition time that she's pretty close there. But, you know, the big thing would be, you know, really going down into the steps. All right, so it looks like the big thing is the steps here. So at 51, this would be her 51st step in, in comparison to the 52nd step in her you know, race in the Olympic trials where this is her 51st step here and then 52nd. And then, so she added about another probably full step on her actual running. And typically, you know, when it comes to your overall turnover speed, so for an additional step, right, we, we go into the contact time, which we already said is 0.08. And then we also go into the transition time, which is 0.32, right? So that adds an additional 0.4 seconds, which times out pretty well, because here she was running a, a 10, uh, I want to say it was an 87, ended up being the time here. Um, and then she ended up running, I want to say an 11, 12 here on this one. Um, and so a little bit under, you know, like this would make it so it'd be closer to like a pure 11 too, but you know, definitely adds a significant amount of time when you add more steps. So she tried to maybe quicken her steps or step step overall, and that ended up adding more time because when she can get, you know, all the way through and, you know, closer to 51 steps, that's obviously going to be much more effective in terms of, you know, being able to pick up the necessary distance and still maintain that great turnover where she kind of wasted that time and ability to get down the track as fast by, you know, maybe quickening up those, that step or, or making it she, was, she wasn't picking up as much distance. So she got closer to like 52 and a half steps where before she was at about 51 and a half. So, all right, as always guys, thanks for watching these videos. If you like the information, go ahead and click that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, you can leave those down below. We always wanna provide great information for you guys to understand how you could run faster. What are some of the key techniques in order to do so, not only for the 100 meter, but also for really any of the track events, the 60, the 100, the 200 meter, anything that has to do with sprinting even the 400 meter and then also want to be able to help out with you know baseball athletes football athletes in the 40 yard dash 60 yard dash just because if you can really give it a technical understanding right really look into the steps look into the contact time and look into the transition time that really gives us the opportunity to make some substantial improvements from a pure objective standpoint right if we can really break down how much you know how many steps that you need to take in order to really optimize the race and then you know break that down into your contact time or the time spent on the ground and your turnover time that's really going to be how you optimize your overall speed and the big thing that we do is we actually create a program that will help you in actually making you improve through our speed breakdown so when you go and send a video of yourself running we'll look at your start we'll get your drive we'll get your top end speed and then we'll give you exercises drills things to be able to work on and really make sure you're able to make a lot of improvements from a sprinting perspective and understanding what it is that you need to improve within your sprint as well as understand what are the drills and exercises needed to actually make the change and usually i break it down into different segments so like at the beginning we'll concentrate more on the start and then we'll go over the drive phase and then we'll go into the top end speed really to make sure that you're able to improve in all those areas. So if you're interested, go ahead and check out the description down below in order to get started. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, again, leave those down below or you can reach out to me. And if you're still watching this and you haven't clicked that thumbs up, really appreciate you do that. That really helps us out a ton. And we'll talk to you soon.